So I've got a 2008 XC70 here, which is my own car, and uh, it has a noisy differential. It is quite common that the uh, bearing fails in, uh, in final drive. So I've never done this job before, but uh, I will give it a go. Uh, first, I have to pull off the whole axle to get the differential. So that's what I'm going to do now. I think I have to remove the shock absorber or the bottom mount for this and then all the electrical cables and then brake calipers and uh, I would just hang the brake calipers somewhere up there so they will stay with the car and everything else should come down. I also have to undo the prop shaft and uh, there's a mount for exhaust which has to come off and the exhaust will stay up there and then it's just these uh, these mounts here and then this this one and this one and same on the other side and that's pretty well it I think uh, should come down then if you have electric parking brake then you have to uh, use the diagnostic tool to go into service mode so it would uh, release the brakes so you can remove the calipers. So once you've removed all the bolts from the prop shaft to get it off, there is uh, there's some extra holes. Just see. Let me show you. So between the actual bolt holes, there's uh, another hole there on both sides, and. Um, it's actually threaded, so you could uh, put a bolt in there and just uh, put the bolt in and that would push push it out. Well, maybe it's not threaded after all. Anyway, uh, what I use is uh, a 7mm bolt from uh, either a water pump of a Volvo engine or something similar. It fits in there pretty good, so you just put it in, it has to be long enough. You put it in and uh, just hit it and it usually comes off pretty easy. Just have to watch out so that you wouldn't damage uh, your Haldex module or pump or anything else. So the brake calipers are hanging up there. This is all released, all the wires and pipes should be free now. Um, same on the other side. You also have to undo the ABS plug. This came off pretty easy. And um, I think I have just those four bolts now. So. Uh, Let's we'll see how we go.
is a, a few little still sort of brackets is still attached to the axle, so I have to take that off. So it is off the car, uh, it is, I think it was easier than, than what I thought it's going to be, uh, it probably took me an hour and a half maybe, and uh, now I'm going to have to get the final drive off, I think I have to pry out the drive shafts and then undo this bolt here and then two at the back. And uh, I hope I can leave the uh, rest of it all sitting in here because uh, I don't think I can lift it off by myself. Anyway, I'll, I'll try to pull it off. I have drained the deep oil already, so I'm going to have to drain the Haldex oil before I take the Haldex unit apart. This is the Haldex oil I'll be using, that's the deep oil, and this is the that's the Haldex filter, and uh, that's the seal and bearing kit for the rear diff, which I bought off eBay. So um, there's um, drive shaft seals. This uh, is the front seal, and these are the bearings. These are the uh, O-rings for the Haldex unit and differential. This is the crush sleeve. And I think this is another... Oh, that's the nut for the... Um, for the actual... Uh, Indian shafts, I think. I'll just so these are all the codes. But I think these are actually Land Rover parts. Because they share the exact same unit with Volvo.
you can see how dirty the oil has been. So it means it probably has been burning between the tail bearing a fair bit. So it's all covered with the black stuff. And this is the this is the tricky part for getting this shaft out. Uh, I think uh, and and adjusting the the tension on these bearings is is the main thing. Everything else is uh, is pretty straightforward. So I think I have to remove this oil seal and then there should be nut behind there so i'll try to remove it first and yeah we'll see what we find i used two self-tapping screws to pull this pull the seal out but uh I think it might actually be better idea to use longer screws and just screw them in until they will push the seal out. For that nut, I need a 41 socket, which I couldn't find. So I'll have to go and visit my friend, who hopefully has it. For to hold the shaft, it's a 23 spline um, shaft. So I found a clutch disc which I took apart and got the middle off of it and this fits it's not not a perfect match but uh, it is slightly larger but I think it has enough surface just to hold it for once so now I have to go and find that socket. I got the socket this is 41 uh, which actually I think it's supposed to be 40 a little bit loose but that'll do what I will do is I'll cut the little bit off and then weld the pipe to it so I could get it in there these are the tools I've made so this in here and I can bolt it down and then this 
one I can turn the shaft. Hopefully it's going to be strong enough. I know it doesn't look like it. We'll see. It was really tight. You can see how it collapsed this pipe. But it's it's a really thin wall one, so it's it's no wonder. And the nut is off now. So now I'm gonna have to press out the shaft. This is the front bearing, which most likely causes the noise. You can see the rollers are damaged and also the outer race is damaged. And the second one is not as bad, but there is a slight damage on the rollers. And same here. The differential ones, they look okay, but because I already have them, I'll be replacing them as well. So now I have to pull this bearing off, and then I'll have to pull the bearings off the differential. I didn't have any good pullers to pull this sleeve off, so what I did, um, I just cut a slight groove in the brace, and then I just hit it with a chisel. And that just broke the broke the thing, so I can uh, take it off now. I use the same method here, so it's pretty easy. There's no shims underneath the bearings here, so. That's pretty easy. Now, um,
So this is what I made to measure the rotational torque. I know it looks um, pretty dodgy, but it works. So uh, what I did is I just calibrated it. I just measured the distance and then calibrated it on the scale. And then mark the positions on here. So it is supposed to be 1.1 plus minus zero. As it happens, my phone battery just died. So I couldn't record the actual measurement, but I'll give you an idea how it should work. So first you have to do up the big nut uh, with 250 newton meters and that should start uh, crushing the crush sleeve and uh, once you've done that you, you're supposed to start measuring the rotational torque of the shaft that is supposed to be 1.1 plus minus 0 0.2 newton meters and um, if it's not that as tight as it should be you just uh, have to do the nut up by one degree increments. Uh, I found out that uh, I couldn't use my torque wrench uh, to do up the nut, so I just started doing it up bit by bit until there was no slack in the shaft anymore. And uh, then I started measuring the rotational torque and then did it up bit by bit and finally got the required number.